I'd like to pass on my thanks to Jasmine for, um, and her team for bringing me here and, and paying for my airfare and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, uh, per the introduction, I'm the, one of the managing directors of Hampton. Hampton's a, a Melbourne-based property development business. Um, I'd like to start the presentation with a disclaimer because ordinarily my sales director would be here doing this, but he's at home in bed with the flu, so they sent me out. Uh, and he's a very funny and entertaining man, um, and me less so, so apologies if it becomes a little bit dry and boring. I can't infuse the presentation with the humour that our sales director normally provides. Uh, I'm going to talk briefly about the property market in Melbourne, but I'm going to also then talk about uh, the history of Hampton and, and also about the project uh, that we're currently selling, Sanctuary. Um, a lot of you may have been to Melbourne. Uh, it seems almost every person I speak to um, in Malaysia and Singapore where we've been recently has either children there or they've studied there themselves and, and if, if that is the case you'd understand Melbourne's a, a very cosmopolitan and cultural city, it's about uh, people sitting down together and drinking coffee and working but no one seems to work too hard in Melbourne, but just hard enough to sustain a good lifestyle. Uh, Melbourne's about big gardens and exercise, it's a very healthy and cultural city. Uh, I think for many years it's been voted in the top five cities in the world. That's probably by Melburnians, but I think it's also been recognised at an international level and often compared to cities like uh, KL and, uh, and Vancouver and, uh, and Sydney and, and cities that, that embody great uh, culture and safety and uh, very good transport linkages, very good universities and education, very good schools. Um, and Melbourne ranks very highly in terms of being a very livable city. Um, so in terms of the brand new property market in Melbourne, um, generally FIRB sales, so international sales, are making up around 25% of the market. In the city, in, in Melbourne city itself, where there are a lot of, now a lot of Asian developers becoming involved, the FIRB sales are a lot higher. Um, we generally by the banks have our FIRB sales limited to around about 20 to 25% of the project, which means we have a small amount of sales that we generally do throughout Asia, um, compared to some of the other Asian developers in the city who may sell a whole project through the Asian markets over here. Um, the benefit, I think, for us is that we end up selling a lot of our projects to owner-occupiers, and generally owner-occupiers look after projects that they live in better than the tenants that live in the project, so you, you generally get a higher quality project and we found, particularly with, with this project of ours in Abbotsford, this is the third stage of three stages, the last stage. The first two stages were sold around 50 to 60% to local owner-occupiers. And, and those owner-occupiers came from um, areas immediately around the site, like Kew and Hawthorne and Richmond and Abbotsford itself. Um, and, and these areas are inner eastern suburb, blue chip, very wealthy suburb. Um, and, and units in the first two stages of the project sold between, say, 350000 and up to $4 million. So you'll find in our buildings, you'll have people living in a small one-bedroom apartment, and on the same level, you'll have someone living in a very large four-bedroom apartment with a very large balcony. So maybe a 200-metre balcony, a 200-metre unit, uh, and they may have paid up to $4 million. Now, traditionally, we all thought in Melbourne that um, not many people that want to live in a very expensive apartment would be happy sharing with people that want to live in a smaller apartment, that the rich wouldn't mingle with the poorer people. Mm -hmm. But in Melbourne now, this has become the norm where people seem happy to intermingle, and particularly the older owner-occupiers, the empty nesters as we call them, want to be around the younger people. Yeah. So what we're finding in our projects is there's a, we're starting to see a, a, a very mixed up community, young people, uh, middle age and even older people and it's it's creating um, a very healthy environment for people to live in and it's also attracting a lot of tenants uh, to the projects because they like this this mixed cultural thing um, and this has been a very good thing that in in our projects we're finding is the case particularly because we're selling a lot of our projects locally um, 
I was asked earlier how many units we will sell in um, sanctuary offshore and in this tranche we'll sell 40 out of around about 160. There's 200 in total. That might be at the tail end we come and sell a few more through Asia but it's, it's likely it's only going to be around 40 to 50 in total. Um, we've already sold around about 30 of those apartments so we have another say 10 to 15 that we'll sell through Asia and the rest will be sold back home which we start in about two weeks. So we've come here first, a pre-launch here and then we'll launch back home um, around about late September. Um, the, the secondary property market in Melbourne, generally all sales are done through the local market. Um, the local market in Melbourne generally prefers non-CBD property, so they prefer to be outside of the city, whereas if you go back to that previous slide, a lot of the development sales are done in the city itself, but the secondary market's not as strong. Um, so we generally tend to avoid the city, um, and we go to the city fringe, where we find the rental demand is um, very good, but we find the secondary market is good, and that generally leads to more capital growth. And uh, offshore, this is a very hard message to understand because I understand here most people are happy to live in the city and there's a very strong secondary market, but in Melbourne it's not quite as deep. Um, so obviously the formula, the equation for property, uh, property acquisition in Melbourne is very simple. Uh, you purchase, you make your gain when you sell or rent. Uh, if you sell, then an Aussie investor or an Aussie owner has to buy, so the secondary market through here. Uh, if you rent, then obviously we need to find you a tenant. Uh, the tenancy market in Melbourne at the moment, I think is running at around about 35 to 4% vacancy, depending where you are, it's different in different areas. Um, the, the real estate market in general in Melbourne, the last few years has been slow, but it now is starting to pick up again. Uh, price rises are starting to become strong and the traditional established home market is starting to become very strong again. And we, we read that in Melbourne through the auction clearance rates. So most people in Melbourne, when they're selling their house, will try and sell via auction. And that's now becoming a, uh, a popular form, again, of selling. Um, now, I'm, I'm certainly not an expert on our currency and how that tracks against your currency, but I'm, uh, I'm told things are slowly improving from a Malaysian perspective. Our dollar is uh, devalued quite strongly recently against the US dollar, uh, the euro and the English pound. Um, but I also understand your, your ringgit has also devalued somewhat. So maybe we're tracking a little bit together, but I understand things are still improving um, from a Malaysian perspective against the Australian dollar. Uh, I mentioned uh, before the popularity of selling houses by auction in Melbourne, um, and this graph shows uh, the auction clearance rate. So this, this tells us how many um, houses are selling by auction, and when Recently, the market has been slow, and you can see that through this area here. Um, when the market is very strong, um, you, you end up around about the 70% plus mark, and you get very strong capital growth through these periods. And we're slowly starting to edge back up here above the 70%, where you'll start to, start to see that strong capital growth again. Uh, sales, uh, sales activity in Melbourne has moved slightly higher. Um, than the five-year average, so there has been a lot of stock on the market in Melbourne. Um, and, and this is the interesting lesson for, again, what, what we're doing. There's a lot of supply, particularly in the city and at Docklands of apartments. Um, you, need to, you need to come out into some of the fringe city areas that are not oversupplied or that are heavily demanded by owner-occupiers to find where there's going to be stronger capital growth over time. I mentioned earlier that where Sanctuary is located, surrounded by some very wealthy suburbs. So we've got people coming out of those suburbs, moving out of their big established homes, so 40, 50 square homes, and buying apartments from us. Um, those sorts of people generally aren't going into the city to buy. Uh, sometimes they're going to Docklands, but generally they're wanting to live in the areas where they've had their home, where their friends are, where their local church may be, or where their community's based. So generally they're coming to projects like ours because there aren't projects otherwise in areas like Kew and Hawthorne that offer the, the type of amenity that, that our project offers. 
So, from our perspective, now is the time. Now's a very good time to be to be buying Melbourne property. Um, our current interest rate in Melbourne is the lowest um, it's been in a very long time, around 2.75%. And you guys would probably laugh because yours is probably lower, but for us, this is very low. Um, this stimulates the market in Melbourne, obviously, and, and the local market becomes active through this, particularly the investor market. Um, our auction clearance rates are becoming high again, and it's, they've moved up around 10% in the last year. Uh, the supply of credit has improved. Banks are starting to lend more so than they were historically or in the last three or so years since the GFC. So the supply of, of funding starting to get very strong again. Uh, and as an example of that, new property home loans in Melbourne rose 18% in the last year. Um, overseas in investment in property has increased 12% over the last two years. So you, you can start to see there's pressures through the market. Overseas people are buying more. Uh, and that may be related to them or their, their children studying there or for other uh, reasons, be it political or financial. Um, but also the local market starting to become very strong again, particularly for the more desirable projects. Uh, the first home buyer incentives, which are around about 10,000 and they get a stamp duty discount as well. Uh, so that's stimulating the first home buyer market. So in Melbourne at the moment, um, things that aren't working so well uh, you may have heard of the growth corridors, so this is 20, 30, 40k out of Melbourne. Um, we're not seeing price growth there yet, uh, so the outer suburbs 20 kilometres plus. Service departments aren't very popular, student accommodation uh, and projects on major roads um, and, and non-strata title projects. Um, there's, a, there's a significant supply of apartments in the city, South Bank, Docklands, uh, parts of St Kilda Road, Queens Road and Carlton. Um, off the plan apartments built on a cheap budget that only attract investors are not seeing good capital growth. Um, and property without unique features and in poor locations are also not seeing growth. Um, projects that are becoming uh, very strong in capital growth, areas that are under supplied in, in owner occupier apartments, uh, the blue chip inner eastern and southern suburbs. So. The eastern suburbs in Melbourne are very popular because there's a huge amount of schools in those areas and that, that helps underwrite property value. Um, the southern suburbs are very popular for two reasons, a lot of schools but they're also very close to the beach. So traditionally in Melbourne the best property has been out the east and south of the city. Um, areas close to educational facilities, so that could be universities or schools. Uh, areas rich in amenity. So Melbourne's become a real cafe society. You, you come down any of the major shopping streets on a weekend and they're full of people sitting outside coffee shops, drinking good coffee, uh, talking, and I'll do it for hours and then I'll go shopping, and then I'll go and buy some property or do whatever. But it's become a really big thing for people to um, socialise very intensively on weekends and I'll go to the best places where they can find coffee. So Richmond, Abbotsford, uh, South Yarra, Turak, South Melbourne, wherever they can get a good coffee, you're starting to see property growth move around the best coffee suppliers. And, and these guys have a very strong following. Um, projects that are rich in the same thing. So a lot of the projects are now starting to build in, into their, into their um, infrastructure, uh, coffee shops and restaurants and, and um, Things like yoga again in Melbourne's become very popular. So we're putting yoga into the projects now and we're putting the sort of services into the projects that people like to enhance their lifestyle. So massage, uh, beauticians, personal trainers, gyms, yoga instructors. Uh, we just finished a project in South Melbourne. They've got a lady who teaches them how to play cards. So we've built a card room. Things like that are becoming uh, quite popular. So people are looking for more than just a place to live in terms of their apartment. They're looking for a place where they can support their lifestyle needs. Um, obviously the river and waterfront are very popular and they're very rare. Um, projects with on-site management and resales facilities are being popular uh, and obviously as always quality finishes and fixtures and fittings. Uh, so to explain briefly the project, this is Eden which is stage one. Uh, you can see the river wrapping around the site, we actually miss it out here on this edge. But 
It's a very unique site because the river runs around the site, all of the frontage of the site, at almost at a 90 degree angle. Um, and the benefit of that is we managed to design 80% uh, of the apartments in the whole project having a river view or a river corridor view, so these trees. Um, this area for Melbourne is very lush, not lush like you've got out here. We don't get the same rainfall and warm weather where things grow like they do here, but our river corridor is very green and we're only 4K from the city, so it's a very unique environment for Melbourne. Uh, it's very easy to go and buy an apartment in Melbourne, but it's very hard to buy an apartment with riverfront, trees everywhere, it's very green, and you can walk out, even today with all the construction of the buildings going on, and you can hear the birds, the bellbirds and the magpies, and it's, it's a really beautiful environment. Um, so, drive into the project here, there's a, a, a ramp down, there's a basement under the whole of the site where everyone parks. Um, then you've got the three buildings, Eden, Haven and Sanctuary. Um, there's a road or a pedestrian link here between Victoria Street and the river, and this is called Acacia Place. Fronting on Acacia Place there's a number of offices. Um, there's a number of restaurants, there's outdoor seating for the restaurants. Um, north's up this way, so the restaurants are filled with north light, which makes them very attractive to people and we're currently finalising who our operators of the restaurants are going to be. So outdoor seating um, with the river just here uh, and this will be very unique in Melbourne too. There's not a lot of places with restaurants with river frontage uh, and north light. Um, around about 30% of the site is uh, private or public open space which is a very high figure for Melbourne. Uh, so there's a lot of space between buildings and obviously there's a lot of, uh, a lot of space out here. So to talk about Sanctuary, uh, there's 193 one, two and three bedroom apartments um, and riverfront terrace homes, so single level and two storey apartments. Um, absolute riverfront location with 200 metres of river um, bending around the site. It's unlikely there'll be a site presented like this again in Melbourne. There's great views of the river, the treetops and the city and I've, I've been talking about the trees. You can see an example of that here. It's really a very green environment. Uh, there's a new public walkway I mentioned, Acacia Place. Each building has the amenity of a five-star hotel, so it's, it's not a hotel, it's a residential building, each of them are, but it looks and feels like a hotel, and, and that makes it a, a great and interesting place. Apartments, and you can see the, uh, the outdoor area through here, and you can see the nice quality, in, in particular for these owner-occupiers, these inbuilt fireplaces and um, lovely joinery units. Uh, that's the same unit, I think, looking the other way. Um, typical bathrooms. So, happy to, if there's any questions, happy to answer those, or I'm, I'm probably happier to go and sit down. So, <laughs> so thank you.